Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So I have here for you uh, Ascension versus Mission reading for the month of November. Now, I know I realize that it is the end of November. It's uh, November 25th as of the moment that I am recording this. But um, I'm glad that this happened now. As many of you in the Twin Flame Collective know, there has been a massive, massive shift in the energies. Many of the uh, the Divine Feminines have walked away from the situation altogether. Um, and there's there's just been a lot of energy around moving forward, moving on, um, being true to yourself, staying true to your mission, staying true to what it is you want to be doing in your life. And a lot of that is coming from this new sense of self-love that many in the Divine Feminine Collective have come to terms with. And so because of that, you know, the doors are closing between the situation, the relationship between her and her Divine Masculine, because she is attracting more self-love, uh, uh, well, she's attracting more love through self-love into her life. Um, so I really wanted to do a, do a Ascension versus Mission reading now because the energies are ripe for it. They're primed for it. There's a, a brand new chapter is starting for a lot of us and you're gonna see that in these readings here, yeah? So please keep in mind that this is a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. I have split this between Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine, so there are two videos for um, the collective. Um, I encourage you guys to watch both because we ultimately we do have Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies within. And so if you're a Divine Feminine watching this right now um, and you go off to watch the Divine Masculine reading, instead of just looking at it from a point of view of what is your Divine Masculine up to, look at how, try and see how it resonates with you or with you, with your own inner Divine Masculine energies, yeah? Uh, other than that, these readings are available for personal situations. So if you would like a, a glimpse or a snapshot into where you are when it comes to Ascension versus Mission, please don't hesitate to go ahead and uh, send me an email and uh, ask for one. They are in the format of mirror readings, so that is going to be the same price as a mirror reading. But just go ahead and email me and let me know that you're interested in an Ascension versus Mission reading tailored to your personal experience, and I will get that scheduled for you, yeah? Okay, so without further ado, let's get to it. Hello there, Divine Feminine. So let's get into this, see where you are in relation to Ascension versus Mission, yeah? All right, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Divine Feminine Collective at this time. Please show us where the Collective is in terms of Ascension, represented by the deck on the left, versus Mission, represented by the deck on the right. Please show us how they may be interacting with and or mirroring each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Divine Feminine, let me shuffle this up a few more times, a few times, and we'll see where we are. So this is Ascension. Many of you have really come into a vibration of unconditional love, um, and it, many of you are still are in the process of doing so. There's a lot of purging that's going on that's allowing you to really get down to the nitty gritty and to love yourself more. And the mark of that unconditional love um, is visible in how you treat yourself, how you approach yourself. Many of us, uh, or many of you really, in the Divine Feminine Collective are isolating yourself, I'm hearing, but this, this is healthy, okay? This is not like unhealthy, you know, hermit mode, like I don't want to see anybody. No, it's... It's nurturing yourself and protecting yourself in order to thrive more, in order to be a better version of yourself. You're kind of removing yourself from toxic people, toxic situations, maybe even business opportunities, jobs, friendships, family situations, that kind of thing. And that's, that's really a good thing. And this is all a product of ascending. It's a product of you holding unconditional love for yourself and not wanting to allow yourself to be in these energies, uh, these situations that really only drag you down, that are low in vibration. All right, 
One more shuffle for Ascension, and then I'll shuffle the deck for Mission, and we'll get into that, yeah? All right, Divine Feminine. So there's your Ascension deck. Let's go ahead and cut that. Boop. All right. That is set. Next, I'm going to shuffle the deck for Mission. Now, the energies around Mission are very similar. Um, you know, the more you separate yourself from those individuals that keep you from living your authenticity, the more you are able to step into your divine mission. Now, your divine mission, like I've said in the past, it doesn't have to have anything to do with, like, uh, 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 energy work, card reading, healing, stuff like that. This is literally anything that, you know, is that, that you're passionate about, that you're excited to do, that is fulfilling in your life. Okay? You don't have to be a spiritual guru to be on, uh, 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 to be on mission, okay? It's really just whatever you, whatever you've come here to do, to be quite honest. One more shuffle, and then we're going to start with the Ascension deck. Divine Feminine. All right. So this deck is for Mission. Let me just cut that. Boop. All righty. So you're all set here. Let's start with Ascension. Overall energy. Hey, look at that. We've got the King of Cups. Emotional maturity, okay? Uh, we just came out of, you know, as of, the, out of, as of right now, I believe we have just come out of Scorpio season. We're now in, as of the moment of this recording, and we're now in Sagittarius season. So Scorpio season was probably really challenging for you, but was also very life-changing. I feel like a lot of you have really come to this emotional maturity this newfound emotional maturity that you didn't necessarily have before, that you may have struggled with finding. And Scorpio season really put, put you through the last throes of purging and acceptance of who you are, where you have been, and where you're going. And that has allowed you to step into this way more emotionally mature state. Okay, that's, that's really awesome. You have the Seven of Cups. You have the Five of Swords. And underneath that, you have temperance. So, yes, um, this is all a depiction of what, and I'm hearing Scorpio season. So what Scorpio season really helped you do was helped you see through a lot of the illusions, help you see through a lot of the um the things around you that were probably pretty toxic, the situations that you've been giving into emotionally that really weren't helping you, that were really just kind of draining you and were leaving you feeling backstabbed, okay? But also with the Five of Swords, this is also retrograde energy. And you also have Temperance here, which is a Sagittarian energy. So we do have Mercury, right? As of this moment, as of the moment of this recording, we do have, um, and actually this is for the month of November. Even though, you know, it's today is actually November 25th. It is the end of the month. Yes, let me just check. check. Yeah, it is November 25th. So this is the end of the month. But this is what, so this is what's been going on for you um, throughout this month of November. We did have the Venus retrograde that ended November 16th. Um, Venus, I believe, is still going to be in shadow period around this until about the 17th of December. Um, but now we have Mercury. At, at this moment, we have Mercury going retrograde through Sagittarius. So there is still there is still some, some purging, some clearing of energies that are happening for you ascension-wise. But because of what happened uh, both during Scorpio season and also while Venus was in retrograde, that has helped you come to a new emotional maturity that is now allowing you to really power through this next retrograde, as in being um, uh, Mercury going in retrograde through Sagittarius which is very much um, more purging, but because you're in this higher uh, state emotionally, this higher um, awareness, this more um, emotionally mature state, you are really able to surmount these energies and really take them full on um, and see through the illusion, see through the lies, weed away or put like, you know, weed through the seven of cups energy that might still have you a bit confused. Okay. Some of you don't really understand why you may have 
been dealing with the things that you've been dealing with with this five of swords energy but for the most part you what you're needing to see here is you're needing to have the emotional maturity to look at these things and say okay but what did what did i contribute to this situation how have i been stabbing myself in the back leaving myself out in the cold that kind of energy okay we have archangel michael going by so a lot of stuff being cut away okay First set of surrounding energies when it comes to Ascension, Divine Feminine, we have the Nine of Swords, okay? So anxiety. So this is the stuff that's coming up, you know, in order that, that you're needing to clear away, that you're needing to um, cut out of your life. Now, there is a lot of illusion here, okay? Especially between the Seven of Cups and the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is... It, it, you know, is is fear is fear is things made being made up. It's all stuff that's up in your head that's causing you anxiety that actually really doesn't have any real truth to it. Okay, but you, powering through this with this emotional maturity is looking at it clearly, seeing it for what it is. Okay, Nine of Swords is coupled with ha ha the Emperor autonomy, taking your power back. Okay. Um, this is the divine masculine energy. So this would be the divine masculine within you coming to the surface and helping you weed through all of the stuff that has been holding you back, that has been keeping you in an anxious frame of mind, okay? This is taking control over your life and over your space and not allowing these things to affect you any longer, not allowing these things to hold you back, to cause you any trouble, clearing these things away, Clearing these illusionary aspects away, okay? The emperor is very, it's like, he not, he's not going to take any shit. So he's not going to allow illusionary circumstances to stand for very long, all right? So if you're stuck in a nine of swords energy because of all this retrograde situation going on, allow yourself to step in your mat stand in your masculine power your divine masculine power and look at things objectively see things for what they truly are and consciously will them away okay second set of surrounding energies when it comes to ascension you have the seven of pentacles so there you go reaping what you've sown um reaping the benefits of the harvest or, or, or the, 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 um, the work that you've been doing. This is the harvest card, okay? But this is also a time for you to see what you are reaping and how that has come to be and to put forth new energy towards planting better seeds or planting new seeds for a better harvest in the future. But ultimately, you have reaping... You, there's this, this is, yes, this is very much a reaping what you've sown energy, but this is... Beneficial. I feel like you're, you're reaping a lot of good stuff right now, Divine Feminine, because you've been doing a lot of hard work, okay? Seven of Pentacles is coupled with the Knight of Pentacles. Excellent. So, reaping what you've sown, but also moving forward in a methodical and balanced and practical way. This Again, this is more energy of making sure that you're planting the right seeds for the next harvest not trying to really rush into things. And this is what's coming through from your King of Cups emotional maturity that you've really grown into, okay? There's a lot of masculine energy coming forward here between the Emperor, the Knight of Pentacles, and the King of Cups. And to me, that's really saying you're stepping into your divine masculine power. A lot of you are really doing a lot of work to heal the inner divine masculine, which is only helping outside circumstances, which is only helping, say, your twin flame or someone that you're connecting with on a soulmate level. It's helping with ancestral things, uh, circumstances and situations. It's also helping masculine energies as a whole, you know, people that you don't necessarily know in life, but still we all have these masculine and feminine energies within. So the more work we do to heal those on an individual level, the more we help others around us, okay? Your challenge when it comes to ascension, you have strength. Standing in your power. This is also taming the beast is what I'm getting a little bit too. Um, and that comes, and that's really coming through with your emotional maturity. There, is, there are going to be some challenges. I'm picking up. There are going to be some challenges here. You're going to have to, you, the, the universe is going to almost test you to see how far you come, to see how, how solid you are in your foundation, how much you have taken control or taken your power back. And you're needing, you're going to need to stand strong in your faith and in your strength and in your willpower to, to keep moving forward, but also 
uh, keep in mind that the more you claim your sovereignty, the more you stand in your power, the more you assert yourself as a powerful being that is in control of their lives, the, the more they're, you're, you might become a target for people or energies that might want to tear you down, don't necessarily want to see you succeed. And I don't say that to scare anybody. I'm just saying that because that's what I'm picking up with strength here. You're going to need to really stand strong and true in yourself and who you know yourself to be. Strength is coupled with the six of wands, <laughs> but victory, okay? Now these are both Leo energies. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... This is victory here. The more you stand in your power, the more you stand in your strength, the more you will be victorious. Now, there is also there's also a message in the challenge of, you know, keeping your ego in check. And that is also where the taming of the beast message was coming through. Um, I would advise to not make a big scene over <laughs> over any sort of new level you may have achieved, a new understanding you may have come to, um, because that can only make you more of a target. And to be quite honest, that's really just acting from a more of an egoic point of view, okay? Not that I'm saying ego is all that bad. You know, it's a part of us that we are not go that we really don't need to completely separate from. But it's more an energy of needing to keep it in check, humbling yourself, knowing that yes, you may have gotten this far, but also many others are going to follow in your footsteps. Okay. The final outcome or the final message here for you, Divine Feminine, when it comes to ascension, you have the unknown. This is a big message right now. The stronger that you get, the more you grow, the, the less you really need to know. There's a lot that's going on around us. There's a lot that's going on around you in your life that you may not really ha be aware, know where it's going. It might feel a little chaotic. And what the universe is saying here with the unknown is it's time to really become more uncomfortable with the unknown. What you really need to be focusing on is your vibration. Where are you? What are you aligning with? What is it that you want to align with? And just focus on aligning with it, not necessarily how or when it's going to come. Okay. Uh, the unknown is coupled with the Six of Swords. But you see, you're moving in a new direction here, okay? And you may not necessarily know where you're going. But the universe is saying, keep an open mind. Don't worry about the destination. Worry more about the journey. Or, or not even, don't even worry. I don't Worry is not the right word. Uh, uh, focus more on the journey rather than the destination. Because you never know where you could end up. And what I'm getting here with the unknown, what the unknown is saying you are going to most likely end up somewhere that you never would have dreamed you would have been, but it's going to be more than you could have ever imagined. Okay? That's really excellent. Really, really excellent. All right. And with temperance here, patience, balance, you know, allowing the universe to work on your behalf, allowing the alchemization process to take its time and to do its work. You can't really rush that sort of thing, okay? Excellent. All right, so now let's get into your mission energies. And you're starting off with the sun. So first and foremost, this is saying to me that you are doing some excellent work, Divine Feminine. Excellent work. There's also illumination happening. With this emotional maturity that you are embodying, that you're coming into, it's illuminating places for you to shine better, to shine forward, to move forward better, places where your efforts and your energies would be much better placed. And especially with how this is depicted in this deck, you see this is a, a man, a masculine and a feminine man and a woman, um, you know, embracing each other in a way. And to me, this is talking about the union between masculine and feminine within, very much the lovers or the two of cups energy. And allowing that to happen, allowing yourself to heal the inner masculine and allowing the inner masculine and inner feminine to integrate to each other is going, or with each other, is going to allow you to illuminate places that you uh, would better shine forward. You have the three of cups here and you have the ace of wands with the moon. 
all right? So more unknown energy. But here, this is an energy of allowing your intuition to speak with to you. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Um, honor your intuition. Listen to your intuition. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the unknown, okay? you Because you're very much moving into a brand new phase in your life, in your existence, career-wise, maybe. So, and... So you have this balance, okay, of mind, body, and spirit with the Three of Cups here. This is a union card, and, and very much about the union within, okay? The, the, the body, uh, body, mind, and spirit are very much working together, much more than they have in the past. And because of that, you have inspiration to move in a different direction, to move in a new direction. Now, there is absolutely some unknown dealt with uh, or having to be dealt with here. The unknown came out in your the very last part of your ascension pro uh, reading. But here for mission, you have the moon, okay? More depictions of the unknown. Um, for some of you, the full moon in Gemini that we just had on the 22nd of November... Uh, has been helpful in illuminating some things for you. Also, I'm picking up for some of you by this next, by the next full moon, you, there might be some some things that are really popping off, some things that are coming through to fruition for you, uh, mission wise. Okay, but you do have the inspiration here to move in a different direction, and some of you might be a, a be afraid with the moon because the moon is about fear. You don't know how it's going to work. You don't you don't know how it's, you're going to get there. This, that, and the other thing. But you don't need to worry about that. Allow the universe to handle the details for you. Okay. First set of surrounding energies when it comes to mission, divine feminine. You have the four of swords. So there is still there is still needing to be some time of rest respite. Um, there's also this actually what I'm getting with the four of swords is you can use this time to plan Knight of Pentacles energy with the uh, in the Ascension reading use this time of because things are slowed I really feel like there's been a, a slowdown in momentum um, Business wise mission wise maybe even Ascension wise a little bit even though I that's not <laughs> Not completely true with when it comes to Ascension, but I do feel like it's, it's a little bit there but um, with the Four of Swords, there's still a bit of energy of being kind of in hermit mode, kind of wanting to just rest and recuperate, meditate, pray, and allowing this and allowing yourself to, to do that will actually really help you, number one, come into greater union with body, mind, and spirit, but also, number two, help uh, facilitate this inspiration with the Ace of Wands to move in this new direction, okay? This would be allowing... The Four of Swords is very much clear, uh, calming your mind, and clearing out the cutter, clutter, excuse me, and giving yourself, or I'm sorry, giving the universe more space to work with, with you in bringing these manifestations forward, all right? The Four of Swords is coupled with the Five of Swords. Very interesting. But the Five of Swords, again, here's the mirroring, guys. The Five of Swords is very much about the retrograde energies, okay? So when it comes to mission, you probably just don't want to be doing too much right now. You probably just want to let this Mercury retrograde that's going on currently as of November 25th, um, and I believe through until December 6th, allow the Mercury and retrograde energies to help you clear out the clutter, help you purge, help you clear away things that are standing in the way, giving the universe more space to work within your life, okay? Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. My nose is itching like crazy. I'm really channeling here. <laughs> All right. Second set of surrounding energies for mission, Divine Feminine. You have the Seven of Wands. Boundaries. Very much. Okay, so when it comes to mission, a lot of, a lot of you right now are learning to set greater boundaries, okay? And that absolutely has to do with the Four of Swords and the Five of Swords here. Taking a break from from the battle and allowing yourself to, 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 to meditate, clear your mind, clear away the clutter is also helping you see where you need to put greater boundaries in place to protect yourself more, especially like for us empaths. I mean, I know specifically I'm going through a period personally where I'm learning how and where I need to put better boundaries in place to help to be able to be of better service. Okay. So that's definitely connected to this Four of Swords energy, this respite, this time of rest and recalibration, recuperation, meditation, prayer, healing, that kind of, that's that's really where we are right now. 
Seven of Rods is coupled with the, look at that, the Hanged Man. Perfect. Okay. This is very much being, uh, kind of being in limbo, kind of feeling like you're in limbo, but ultimately you're not really in limbo other than in the fact of trying to learn where to put better boundaries into place. Okay. This is really, especially with the Hanged Man, and now the Hanged Man and the Four of Swords are very similar energies, but now with it coming out as the Hanged Man, this is absolutely going to be in service of where you are moving towards, what you are moving towards in the future, what this inspiration is for yourself, okay? Wow, that's, I, I mean, I often see, me and some other readers, we often see the Four of Swords as the minor arcana version of the Hanged Man. And so you're definitely, when it comes to mission, you are absolutely being encouraged by the universe to take some time to rest. You don't have to be doing too much right now. And I really feel like, especially since I'm recording this at the very tail end of November, I really feel like this energy is going to carry on through December. I mean, it's the holiday season anyway. This is a time to, you know, spend time with friends and family. You know, work does seem to die down um, because people are spending more money on gifts and such like that for their families. So take this time, take use this to your advantage, Divine Feminine. Use this as a way to really recalibrate, recuperate, get your energies flowing again, get, you know, fill up your reserves so that you can come back once the season changes, once you're ready to go, once you're ready to step out of this hanged man four of swords energy, you can get going with vigor. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Your current challenge when it comes to mission, Divine Feminine, you have more mirroring the Six of Swords. Now, why is this your challenge? Because you are having to allow yourself to move in this new direction, even though you don't really know where you're going to end up with the unknown, okay? That, yes, absolutely. That is absolutely challenging. I totally get that, Divine Feminine. I get it. Six of Swords is coupled with... Oh, the Four of Wands. Okay, well, some of you, I'm hearing, some of you are moving towards union and marriage. Um, could this be with your twin flame? Yes, that's entirely possible. Could this be with someone else? Yes, that is entirely possible too. But I really feel like, you are moving, this is also union and marriage within, okay? And there's still some distance that you need to travel in order to really achieve this. And that is absolutely what this Mercury retrograde, what the Venus retrograde, what Scorpio season has really been moving us through. It is helping us facilitate this union within, the marriage within, okay? But some of you are really destined to be moving towards some sort of relationship. And for a lot of you, that could be, or for a number of you, um, you could be doing some work with this person. You may not have met them yet. Some of you have, but um, you really could be, you know, working in tandem, you know, combining, for, uh, yeah, combining forces in order to be of greater service. Oh, well, that's beautiful. But the biggest message here is, okay, so I guess the, the question is being answered. The unknown, what's unknown? What are you moving towards that's unknown? Union, the four of wands. Union between masculine and feminine energies within, alt which ultimately brings union without. And this would absolutely be coming out in mission because it is part of our mission as twin flames to bring this union within to the forefront to show others how to achieve this union within by way of it showing by example. Okay. Final message here for you, divine feminine, when it comes to mission, you have ooh, the five of cups. Okay. So there are a lot of social aspects to your life that are having to be let go of. And that might be hard. But ultimately, because you see, you have the Three of Cups there, which did come out here. Okay, this is your overall energy. In this sense, this is uh, mind, body, and spirit coming together. Here, in the Five of Cups, this is you releasing all of the situations, all the social settings, familial settings, uh, relationships, whatnot, whatever, that keep you from achieving this union within of mind, body, and spirit, okay? Okay. 
Five of Cups is coupled with the Two of Pentacles. Maintaining your balance. Um, putting, bringing balance into your life after you remove yourself from these situations that no longer serve you, okay? Bringing that balance back into your life. Um, this is also separating yourself from toxic situations and reclaiming your sense of balance. Also, letting go of any sort of juggling that you may have been doing. Okay. So, let's get uh, the Oracle guidance here. I'm going to start with the Crystal Mandala, and then I'm going to end with the... Lightworker Oracle. All right, let's get uh, one message, please, Spirit, for the Divine Feminine in terms of mission and ascension. Here we go. We have card number eight, Archangel Michael and Lapis Lazuli, The Vision. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see here. All right. The vision. We bring you the gift of vision, an inspirational insight from which you shall derive energy, motivation, and a sense of purpose. You have many abilities and the capacity to do numerous things with your talent, time, and energy. We know your heart yearns for meaningful, focused purpose. You have things you want to accomplish, perhaps so many that at times it may feel as though you are attempting to live more than one life in this lifetime. We know you can benefit from a vision, something that integrates all that you want to do into one unifying purpose. Even if you do not see how it is possible for all your talents and dreams to be woven into one master vision, we know that love makes all things possible according to its own creative intelligence and wisdom. The universe shall take care of the details, and from the loving universal mind, in accordance with divine timing and your own readiness, we shall gift you with your vision. See, look at that. That's perfect. Temperance, divine timing, the unknown with the Six of Swords. You're definitely moving towards something new, Divine Feminine. And even though you may not necessarily be able to see what that is, where you're going, what it's going to turn out to be, you just need to allow the universe to work on your behalf here, okay? And maintain your alignment, yeah? Okay. Now, closing message from the Lightworker Oracle. All right. All right, Spirit. Closing message, please, for the Divine Feminine. In, rela in relation or regards to ascension versus mission. Thank you so much, Spirit. One message, please. Last message, please. Here we go. Card number 22, Initiation by Fire. Now, this is also a message for some of, uh, some of you that have been seeing uh, twos a lot lately. Okay, so if this might be extra special, but again, this is just the closing message here. I, I feel like I want to say those of us that have been seeing 20, uh, 22, 222, 2222, anything like that recently and um, con uh, uh, consistently, you might want to pay extra special attention to this. Initiation by fire is a life-changing spiritual cleansing. Your life will never be the same again. Allow the power of divine fire to clear and purify you inside and out. This is not a time to hold on to anything, no matter how much you once believed you needed it. In letting go, you will gain so much more than you ever imagined, opening to fresh blessings and new life. You are, like the phoenix, ready to emerge from the holy fires, or holy flames, excuse me, reborn. I want to read a little bit more of this. You have the spirit of the phoenix in you. You are able to rise again and again, even if at times all seems lost. 
You are guided to remember this as you are now being spiritually cleansed through initiation by fire. During such times, you will feel that you are being asked to let go of relationships, situations, sometimes even jobs, attitudes, and belief systems that you have relied upon until this point. You might have unintentionally placed more faith in that person, place, belief system, or identity than you placed in the divine. You might have held on to them rather than allowing the divine to guide you. This can happen easily on the earth plane. Sometimes these attachments become confining rather than supportive. In such cases, you will need to free yourself to continue your life journey. During the initiation by fire, all such attachments are burned away. Okay, so there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was really helpful for you. This is really great, Divine Feminine. You're really in a, a place of power. You're stepping forward. You're transitioning. You're coming into something new. And it's beautiful. You just don't allow yourself to be open-minded enough to, to move into this new without really knowing what's coming because the universe has your back. I mean, you've been doing a lot of great work anyway, and you really are reaping the benefits of all that work. So move forward confidently, yes? Much love to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.